Hello and welcome to Advanced Youth Tech Talk. I'm your host, Rosie Politron, and in today's episode, we'll be discussing women leadership in the insurance industry. The insurance industry has traditionally been male dominated, but today more and more women are breaking through the glass ceiling and taking on leadership roles. To shed light on this important topic, we have with us today, Sarah Muniz, who's an experienced insurance executive and a champion woman leadership in the industry. Hi, Sarah. Hi, Rosie. How are you? I'm fine. How are you? I'm good. I'm excited to be here with you. Well, thanks for being here. Thank you. So, Sarah, can you tell us a little bit about your journey and how you became a leader in the insurance industry? Um, Absolutely. So um, I became a leader or a voice for the insurance industry kind of by accident. Um, I wrote a book, Undiscovered Voices, and when I wrote that book, I really just wanted to share the barriers that women have in the insurance industry and share my story as well, along with several other women's stories. Um, my, my, my life in the insurance industry has been um, a roller coaster ride, to say the least. Um, my very first job, I when I got pregnant, the um, agency principal let me go, um, told me that he didn't think women should work (laughs) after they get pregnant, which I rebutted that I needed to feed my baby. So that's kind of important as well. Um, So that was like one barrier. Um, Luckily, I was able to find a position pretty quickly because I was licensed and there's always a need for talented insurance people everywhere. So um, my next Role. I was a customer service rep, and after a couple of years, I wanted to move into sales so that I could make more money and provide more for my family. And he just kind of glass ceiling me at it as a customer service rep and told me I wasn't a salesperson, even though I was doing a lot of sales in the office. So that was kind of frustrating. And then when I got into a sales role, I took in a different position, got into a sales role, was rocking and rolling and doing a great job. Um, I wanted to get into management and they told me I was too good at sales. And so yet I saw another glass ceiling. And then um, I would see, I would actually train a lot of the guys that were coming into the lower levels um, as a sales representative. I would train them and then they would tell me that they, that I need to train them really well because they're going to move into a management position. So I started seeing a um, real pattern. I, um, I left that position after nine years to go work at another um, agency and um, actually got sexually harassed at that agency. So I feel like I've seen it all <laughs> at this point. Um, and then I, I ended up working um, for an insurance tech selling um, virtual assistants, which was really fun. And I got to go to a bunch of conferences. And that was really when I started the journey of writing the book because I wanted to share my barriers so that the next generation doesn't have to deal with those barriers. Hopefully we can start removing more and take away more of the bias. So I just really wanted to be a voice for for women. Um, I wanted to give them a voice in my book and hopefully we can make the industry a stronger place. Wow, that's inspiring. Um, What are some of the most common challenges that women face in the insurance industry when it comes to specifically leadership positions? So I would say um, bias is definitely one. A lot of times the people who are in executive positions are usually um, men and they're going to look to other men to promote them because they're more similar to them um, instead of looking at the women as well. So we need to like even out the playing field just because you look like someone doesn't mean that you shouldn't mentor someone you don't look like. Um, The other thing is glass ceilings. Um, I see that women get kind of stuck in service roles more often. And a lot of times women do start off in service roles versus men may start off in a sales role. And um, there's more, usually more room for growth in a sales role versus a service role. And for some reason, service roles just don't move into upper level positions or get looked at for that. And the other thing is when, women are childbearing ages. Um, they, a lot of times they're seen as, we don't want to move them up because they're probably just gonna have a baby and leave after their maternity leaves. So there's a lot of 
um, assumptions and not every woman's going to have a baby that's in childbearing years or they may be they may wait another 10 years you never know so it's um there's a lot of issues and then sometimes women get promoted they'll get promoted in this situation where they're not trained and um and then they they don't have a way to succeed so there's that and then um there is a level of confidence as well that seems like men come in more confident um, in the beginning and they just know that they can do it whether they can or not and women have to prove to themselves and others that they can do it before they start feeling confident so that's another um barrier that really holds people back well those are definitely some things that need to change um how do you think the industry can address these challenges and create more opportunities for women reach so I think just putting yourself, your own bias in check and um, whether that's with gender, race, ethnicity, whatever it is, just making sure that you're not unconsciously choosing one type of person over another, um, making sure that there's mentorship programs within a company, um, make sure you're setting everyone up for success. The, the biggest thing that I see in the insurance industry is that, especially on the agency level, is there's not a lot of training. A lot of times you just kind of learn as you go. And if there's more formal training, um, then you have more opportunity for growth as well and for learning. And um, giving like a career path to women to where they know, or to everybody really, to where they know um, where they're they're headed in the company and what's possible. Because if, if, you, if you think you're gonna be just stuck in the same role for 20 years, a lot of times you're not going to stay in that role um, because you don't see a future at that company. So really making sure that there's a future for everyone and for growth will really help, help retain talent as well. Okay, those are all great points. What advice would you give young women who are just starting their careers in the insurance industry and aspiring to become leaders? So I would say to come in confident. And um, that's what um, men usually do. They come in confident and you don't have to prove to anybody anything um, with, you don't have to prove to them before acting confident. You can be confident right off the bat um, while your learning is going. Make sure that you find mentors both inside and outside of your company that have been where you're at and have moved up in companies that can really help you, um, help speak your name in a meeting and um, really take your own education as well um, into your own hands. So making sure that if you need to get certifications, get more education, go to conferences, things that can really help you advance your career as well and give you more confidence. So um, I would say to, to any woman that goes into the insurance business, you are gonna help set yourself up for greatness and change our industry for the better. Um, I know that there's a lot of people working towards a more diverse environment. I really think it's going to change in the next 10, 15 years. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us today and sharing your insights on this topic. Um, it's been a pleasure to having you on the talk, Sarah. Where can people reach you? Um, so you can reach me at, on LinkedIn. Um, it just says Sarah Muni sorry, Sarah Muniz on LinkedIn. Um, also, I have a website, it's undiscoveredvoices.org. And, um, and then my book is available on Amazon, Undiscovered Voices, um, Unlocking the Talent, Unlocking Women's Talent in the Insurance Industry. Okay, that's lovely. Um, for everyone else, don't forget to share, like, and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on all the other videos. Thank you, everyone.